Hello students, I am S. Sundaresan, Eisen Process Senior Grade, working in Textile Technology Department, Kumaraguru College of Technology, Saranamati, Khoyamthor. Uh, now we are going to deal e parts are a part of yarn testing in textile se sector. So yarn testing is a very important one in the textile mill. Uh, yarn is available in cone, cheese or cup form and the yarn is a very basic material for making fabric or any other suiting materials. The yarn quality is very important one and it has to be tested day to day, minute to minute in the textile, textile mill. Yarn is being sold in the market uh, based on the quality and based on the grade. Yarn is going to be of good quality will be having higher uh, market value than the lower quality. So, very much important is given in the mill for maintaining the quality and consistency. If you are going to maintain the consistency, market level is going to be fulfilled. The necessity of the testing is very much important in the case of yarn. If the yarn is going to have lesser strength, it is not going to use for that particular purpose. So, the buyer needs should be met by using testing methods which are going to be a yeah, versatile one. For yarn test, it can be done yarn is going to be test for strength, count, uh, evenness, hairiness and unevenness also. In case of um, the yarn which is going to be graded by the count system, the count should be maintained within the tolerance limit of the meeting of the buyer specification. We have to, we have to maintain the buyer, buyer's need so that the yarn is going to be sold in the market to the highest price in the market value. So in the case of <coughs> quality, the yarn is going to be uh, sold by using the testing methods called least strength tester, single yarn strength tester and also evenness tester. The mill should have a separate say, quality control department which will monitor the quality based on the day to day uh, period. So the yarn has to be uh, tested uh, every shift, every day and the evenness of the yarn should be maintained as per the specification needed by the marketing sector. The yarn may be of combed yarn, carded yarn uh, and may be a uh, plied yarn and it, go, it is going to be a, a hectic task for the mill people. There may be a variation within the package, uh, between the package and you have to maintain the pa uh, average value as it is a specification standard. The, for this, the mills has to be followed the certain norms based on the research institution called CITRA, BITRA or NITRA. So based on that value, it has to be maintained within the tolerance, otherwise the lot should be rejected by the buyer. In case of export market, the most stringent measures should be taken to maintain the yarn quality based on count strength uh, and its CV percentage and also total imperfection because if the, this is, these are going to reflect in the final product. For example, if the hairiness of the yarn is going to be high, it should be reflected in the final fabric which will have a poor appearance. So it should be um, uh, reflected in the final quality of the fabric. The fabric durability is going to be get uh, uh, wasted because it has got higher hairiness. So measures to be take, taken to test the yarn in the intermittent process also and uh, measures to be taken to find the fault and causes for rectifying the fault uh, based on the uh, output result given by the testing instrument. This is, this is done in case of export oriented unit and also in case of modern spinning unit. This is going to be a given uh, very good importance because the yarn is going to be the final product in the textile sector. In spinning mill, the yarn is the final product. The yarn is graded and marketed according to the linear density, that is count. The yarn quality is decided by the strength and count. The price of the yarn will be based on the quality only. For yarn test, the following are the must. One is the what are the count we are going to use and the systems of count. Second one is the linear density of yarn and strength in terms of tenacity and least strength and count strength product and also yarn twist measurement, yarn appearance, yarn hairiness and classimate faults and evenness. These are the tests to be made for ascertaining the quality of the yarn. What is yarn count? It indicates the weight per unit length per unit weight. 
For example, in case of English system, the count denotes the number of hangs of 840 yards that will weigh 1 pound. This is the definition for English system. Most of the mill are following English system only. It is denoted as NE in case of yarn numbering system. Now, we can classify the yarn numbering system into two major categories. One is called direct system and another is called indirect system. In direct system, text and linear are playing a vital role. In indirect system, English, worsted like that they are going to use. For in case of export, if you are going for export market, the yarn is numbered in case of text system. So, text is the universal numbering system. Then how to determine the count? We can see how to determine the count of the yarn. This is the primary test of the spinning mill. The yarn number should be maintained in the production system. Irrespective of the system of yarn numbering employed, two basic requirements for the determination of yarn numbers are, one is accurate value for the sample length. We have to make a length of the sample to a determined length. So another system is required, an accurate value for its measurement of the weight. For this we are requiring chronic balance and a length measurement module. Then how to determine the count again? The method determination of yarn count depends on large extent from which the yarn is available. So this indicates the yarn availability form, whether it is in cone or bobbin or any other bulk material. In case of the bobbin or ring frame bobbin, it is easier to find the count of yarn. Suppose if we want to test the yarn which is in the fabric, we require a separate instrument for determination count because it is of sort of length. Next the count determination, the count determination can be done in the yarn form and also fabric form. In the yarn form, the measurement is based on length, then the fabric form, the measurement is based on weight. This is the major difference between the yarn availability in the yarn form and also in the fabric form. So we are using different system of numbering as I said, in the case of indirect system, cotton that is English system, linen system, metric system, spun silk, worsted. It is denoted as NE, NW etc. For example, in English system, number of 840 yards that is length is fixed and it is going to be weight 1 pound that is called English system. In the case of metric system, number of kilometers weighs 1 kg. If 1 kilometer of yarn is going to bound, it should weigh 1 kg. If it is going to be 1 kg, it is termed as 1 NM. That is the system we are going to follow in the textile industry. The count is named mostly in the case of English that is NE or TEX. In the case of TEX is the indirect system, NE is the direct system. In the case of direct system, text, denier, hemp, woolen and jute system. Text and denier are going to be play an important role in universal export market. Text is denoted as TT and denier is denoted as TT. And in case of text, number of grams in 1 kilometer. In case of denier, number of grams in 9000 meters going to be a basic. And second, weight measurement. We are using analytical balance and any other balance used to determination of count must be accurate and calibrated time to time in order to get the exact reading. Moisture content also plays an important role in case of testing. Moisture content affects the results largely, so it is very important to do 24 hours containing of the sample in standard atmospheric condition. The standard atmospheric condition is 65% relative humidity with 27 plus or minus 2 degree centigrade. And uh, we are going to see the beastly balance which is used for testing yarn count in the fabric. It consists of a adjustable knob which is going to be adjust the pivotal lever to the pivotal fixed pointer position. Then the yarn sample is cut according to the template and is going to be present in the specimen hook and we have to weigh the weighing hook in the center which is going to be in the pivotal point. Pivotal point is going to be down because of the hook weight and it is the hook point will be down in sense of fixed point position. Then the yarn raveled from the fabric is one by one is placed which is being cut according to the template the measurement is going to be placed in the specimen hook one by one until the pivotal point lever points uh, towards the fixed position pointer that is the end point of the experiment and we are going to count the number of threads which are going to place in the specimen hook that results the count of the yarn in the English system. So this is one of the method this photograph is also shown for business balance. The basal is one consists of lightweight beam pivoted and jewel bearing with a hook and one other point of other. 
the beam is initially level to bring the pointer against the dantum line. The standard which is subsented in the notch on the beam arm on the pointer side. Now this is a very simple instrument which can be used to test the count of the yarn which is in the fabric form. Then next this is the major one which is the system used in the industry. The count strength of the yarn using lead method. For this we require wrap reel which is shown in the figure and the electronic balance and the lead tester. So three instruments are required to determine the lead strength count and count strength product of yarn. A wrap reel is a machine which is having a to produce a continuous length of yarn in the form of a coil of 80 threads which are having a diameter of 1.5 yards. So the total length in the lee will be 120 yards. So it is an automatic wrap reel machine which is going to be used to, to produce a lee according to the standards. Then yarn strength it is measured in terms of lee strength as skein strength express in terms of count strength product. Lee tester this is a simple and versatile machine. They are made in different capacities up to 100, 200, 300 and 500 LPS. The unit records tensile strength and extension at breaking. The rate of traverse is 12 inches per minute. The lead tester is operating on the constant rate of extension that is CRE principle in particular pendulum type. For example, the lead tester consists of a dial, pointer, top jaw, pendulum, serrated quadrant and motor and the lead is placed in between the two jaw that is fixed jaw and the screw mechanism makes the bottom jaw to move downwards so that the extension of the yarn will be indicated in the dial. After the yarn breaks, the pendulum also moves gives the breaking strength in pounds. So this shows the method of photograph of a lead strength tester. Preparation of test specimen. Number the selected cones or calves and fix them on the bobbin holder of the wrap reel. The first thing we have to make in the lead strength tester is we have to make the lee. For this we have to select the number of calves and our cone what are the raw material in the creel part of the wrap reel. Reel out the required length of 120 using the wrap reel. Cut and tie the trailing end and the lee of the lee and to its leading end. The leading end and the trailing end should be jointed by using a knot. Similarly, take 30 leaves making a total of 40 leaves from the same 10 bobbin. So for a bobbin you should make 30 readings. The condition sample in the conditioning box about 12 hours. In the standard testing atmosphere, the sample should be kept in the testing room for 12 hours. Then determine the mass in grams of the lead and calculate the cotton count. If you are going to have the mass will be in the gram, it can be converted into cotton count by using the formula. 64.8 divided by weight of lee in grams. Next, we have to test the strength of the yarn. Bring the hooks of the testing machine to the zero position. First, you have to test the set the machine to the zero position. Take it particularly with the count known. First, we have to find the count, and we have to for that only we are going to find the strength of the yarn and fix it on the hooks and carefully separate the yarn to avoid the overlapping of the individual strand. The, all the 80 threads should be parallel to each other. The start the machine and carry out the test and up to rupture. The lee strength is automatically recorded in the system. The count CV, strength CV, lee CSP, maximum minimum values of count strength are obtained in the printouts. Similarly, find the breaking load of the remaining lees, record them against the respective counts. Calculate the average breaking load, average linear density of the observation taken, coefficient of variation of the breaking load. So computation of corrected CSP. After this, the computation of corrected count strength product you have to make. C2S2 is equal to C1S1 minus 13.0 into C2 minus C1. S1 is the observed least strength in pound. S2 is the corrected strength to the nominal count that is LBS. And C1 is the absorbed count, C2 is the nominal count. This is the final CSP of your yarn produced in the mill. In the case of count strength product, you have to multiply it with the respective yarn count and respective yarn strength and it can be used for count strength product. And finally, we have to find the average value of the yarn count, average strength and average CSP and it is going to be used for converting the corrected CSP. From this we can calculate the coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is nothing but sigma divided by x bar into 100. Standard deviation divided by mean of the value into 100. Rough idea about CSP of the different varieties of count produce. For example, coarser count up to 24 NE. If it is cotton count, 
the CSP will be 2000. The expected CSP from the market is count strength product will be 2400. And in case of finer above 70s, it will be 2550. If the count is going to be finer, the CSB also going to be finer. This you can interpret. In case of homewood cotton yarn, the same up to coarser count, the CSB expected is 2500. And in case of above 70, for example, if it is the yarn is made up of polished viscose, in case of up to 24 count NE system, the CSP expected in the market will be 3400 and it is going to be 3000 in case of above 70 because CSP will decide the weavability of the yarn. In the table, we are going to give the conversion factors. If you know the English system, for example, English custom system, if you are going to convert into text count, we have to divide it by 591 divided by English system, it will give the text. This table is useful for converting the different numbering system into another value. For example, if we want to convert the text. If you are having a text system, I want to know the English system, it will be 591 divided by text will give the English count. This is the procedure we are going to adopt. This table is useful for converting the yarn count according to the different system. If you know the one type of system of count. Next we can see the twist measurement in the yarn. The twist is inserted in the yarn to have a strength. The twist is expressed in terms of twist per meter or twist per inch. It is, can be found using twist per inch. In case of there are two types of twist. One is called S twist and the other one is Z twist. The twist plays an important role to give the yarn strength. If you are having more twist, the yarn should have more snarling tendency. So, optimum should be maintained. So, to know whether machine is giving correct type of twist we are inserting, this instrument we are using for testing the twist in the yarn. So, twist may be tested using the simple tension type twist tester. In this case, the tension type twist tester has two jaws. One is a fixed jaw, another one is a rotatable jaw. The specimen length will be known as gauge length. The distance between fixed jaw and the rotating jaw is known as gauge length. That is mostly it is going to be 10 inches gauge length. The yarn is placed in the fixed jaw and it is going to be wound on the rotating jaw. And the tensioner, the scale we have to maintain the tension weight. The tension weight applied for the depends on the count of the yarn. Count has been converted into text and it is divided by 2. Adding weight should be made adjustment before doing the experiment. Now, after mounting the yarn, the first the sliding should be in the index mark and we are going to start accordingly anti-clockwise or clockwise depending on the twist direction in the yarn. For example, if the yarn set twist, the handle should be rotated in the anti-clockwise and after rotating, every rotation the counter will indicate the number of rotation here. Because of the untwist, the yarn specimen length is going to be more, the sliding pointer will move towards the rotating jaw. Again, up to certain extent, after rotating in the same direction, all twists are going to remove the specimen and it, the twist is inserted in the opposite direction, S direction. Suppose if the parent yarn has got S, Z direction twist and we are rotated in the anti-clockwise, first initially the twist is released up to certain extent and all the twist live in energy has been removed from the parental yarn, rotating the same direction, the twist is inserted in the opposite direction. Again, until we have to maintain the sliding pointer should move towards the index mark. This is the end point of the system. And we note down the reading. If suppose if it is going to be 400, it is going to be counter notes 400. The TP in the yarn will be 400 divided by gauge length. Gauge length we are going to have 10 inches. That is 400 divided by 10. The TP in the yarn will be 40 twist per inch. This is this method is repeated for 10 samples. Average of 10 has been taken and twist variation is also made. Yarn appearance. This is a subjective evaluation of the method which gives the appearance of the yarn. We are using the blackboard to wind the yarn how it is going to be appeared. And we are going to conclude with the standard AST America standard testing and material board how it is going to be appearing in the norm. Gently followed, wrap the yarn around blackboard at 25 cm to 14 cm. Number of wraps per cm is selected between 8 to 19 depending on the yarn cone. After winding the board, it is compared on the standard photograph provided by the ASTM. And we give the grade interest also. A and above, this grand index will be 130 and C plus will be 100. For example, below D is 60. 
at the standard yarn board is compared with the wound on if the grade is given a the yarn is graded as very good yarn with the no large enough very few small enough must have very good uniformity and less fussiness if it is going to be b no large enough few small enough less than three small pieces of foreign matters on the board but quality is less than the a the grade is given c Uh, larger nefs and the quality appearance is lesser than b if it is d it is more slubby yarn more nefs larger nefs fussiness thick and thin places is there the yarn is very poor quality and if it is e grade the below d grade more defects and you have to take a respective action on the spinning parameters so this is the method how the yarn is going to have appearance has to be important another important factor to test the yarn hardiness yarn hardiness is a very important part of the staple yarn it gives pleasant hand to the material we will have create processing problem during the further technological operation hardiness occurs because some fiber migration protrude from the yarn body some looped fibers arch out from the yarn core and some wild fibers in the yarn hardiness liberates through migration of yarn and it lead to pilling in the fabric the hardiness is expressed in two terms one is called hardiness index another one is called s3 value hardiness index is the total length of protruding fibers with reference to the sensing length of 1 cm of yarn hardiness measurement gives the number of protruding fibers more than 3 mm in the length in the measurement of length of 1 meter of yarn so research has found that the protruding fibers having more than 3 mm will cause the problem during processing so s3 value gives the number of protruding fibers more than 3 mm length of the yarn measured for 1 meter here the hardiness is measured by using optical principle where the yarn is measured through a photoelectric reflectors whether it is measured the yarn from the core yarn body how much yarn is protruding from the surface like that how much 3 mm yarn how much 4 mm how much 5 mm up to 10 mm we are going to measure and automatically give the measurement in another system the sensor are fixed place 3 mm length 4 mm length 5 mm length 6 mm like that the yarn is passing through that values if it is going to touch the protruding yarn for example if it is going to 18 mm protruding yarn if it is going to touch the sensor the yarn is counted as 18 mm like that for that we are going to have 2 mm 4 mm 6 mm 8 mm 12 mm like that we are having a slot these are the measurement principle of hardiness measurement now we are coming into how to classify the fault using the yarn fault it is working as a capacitance principle where in which standard voltage is passed between the two capacitors when the yarn is going inside the capacitor it is affected flow voltage value depending on the thickness of the material if it is yarn is more bulk the standard output will be recorded in the printer for example the yarn diameter is 1 by 28 into root count for any count value if the nominal yarn will have one sensor signal if the nominal yarn diameter less than the value the more current will be passing through the capacitor if the nominal value is more than that of yarn diameter the lesser current will be passing through the signal sensor from this it is decoded and the class has been fault has been determined for example in the case of classimate fault if the yarn is more than 400% of nominal yarn diameter it is termed as a4 like that if it is plus 100% more than nominal diameter is going to be a1 like that if it is less than 70% of the yarn nominal what is it a thin place it is termed as h1 h2 so the classimate fault classify the yarn from a1 to a4 b1 to b4 c1 to c4 d1 to d4 and e f and g h1 h2 i1 and i2 so here for example the upper portion a4 a3 a2 a1 a0 b1 b2 b3 c1 and c0 and d4 will be based on different in the raw materials we have to concentrate on the blow room and carding we have to the fault is due to raw material above that a4 b3 b4 c3 c4 d4 d3 d2 are because of your machine fault or drafting system then short thick faults will be we can classify the fault into short thick faults that is if the yarn has got a4 fault b4 c3 c4 d3 d4 these are objectionable fault it should be removed stricter norms a3 b3 c2 d2 are also considered as objectionable 
long thick pulse if clasimate indicates your yarn have e and g uh, this will be a long thick pulse thin pulse h2 i1 i2 or more critical it should be removed it should be removed using the winding of the yarn then uh, we are coming into measurement of yarn evenness how the yarn is going to have evenness in your um, how it is going to have more uniform diameter thick place the instrument used for measuring the thick thin and the nips it will give the value into total imperfection the yarn is passed through the capacitor depend on the normal yarn diameter the signal is going to be given to the processing unit and it is classified using thick or thin or nips thick place is higher than 200 times higher than that of normal diameter thin place is 200 times lesser than the yarn diameter nips is 400 times the yarn diameter this is going to be classified into the after testing result for 1 km the yarn will have it will give how many thick places how many thin places how many nips the total of three will be have total imperfection then the result will be unevenness or irregularity that is u percentage and cv percentage cv at different cut lengths imperfection maximum and minimum variation relative count and hairiness value it gives the value for example this table will gives the complete picture about the yarn quality yarn parameters for example, first first we have to give the linear density which is termed as count for example if it is termed as tex 14.78 and 14.70 in the compact system tenacity which is the strength in yarn that is least strength can be converted into tenacity like that that is 17.31 and 20.54 and breaking through the elongation percentage 4.68 hardness value h value will be 5.79 evenness value is cv how much of your yarn coefficient of variation in evenness 11.43 thin places in percent of the yarn minus 50 percent per kilometer is zero thick places is 50 percent is seven and the nips plus plus 200 percent is 14 so this will give the pictorial view how the yarn is going to be tested these are the characteristics given to the buyer yarn is like this and these are the quality of the yarn which is given to the market according to the different count system after learning this module the student can understand what are the important properties of yarn to be tested what are the configuration to be made what are the sequences of testing what are the what the what its roles on fabric quality like yarn strength cv percentage count strength product different type of count systems and the instrument used for testing how it is going to be operated the sample preparation and how to interpret the result and also even of the yarn how it is going to affect the quality of the product and also the uh, product which is going to be sold in the market how it is be maintained the for the quality how to maintain the consistency what is about the cv percentage what about the different system of numbering systems and also um, for example hairiness hairiness how it is going to be reduced how it is going to be tested what are the methods of expression of the hairiness result what are the instrument to be used for testing the hairiness what are the principles adopted in hairiness testing and also in the classimate of false how the false are class- classified according to their presence in the yarn what are the effect it is going to be um, made in the fabric so it is very useful this uh, chapter for a student who is learning a textile sector going which is which is more vital the testing of yarn is more vital in case of textile sector and i can i can give an assurance that after learning this module a students can um, thoroughly understand the testing procedures of yarn in this sector